machine. Usually you use really huge mills in manufacturing for um, you know, shaping billets of iron or machining out molds for a manufacturer or what have you. But these little guys are really awesome for PCB manufacturing. Um, we gave you a bunch of material stuff that we brought, that you brought out as a partner. So this is machining wax. You can make molds out of it. You can, um, you know, and there are a bunch of materials. You can mill wood with it. You can cut out neat little stencils. You can make stamps, block prints, um, and you know, pretty much anything. And it's really great for rapid prototyping because if I know there's a lot of trouble engineering that is. Um, if you want to see if your board works, so if you have a board design that you come up with on your CAD program or what have you, um, and uh, you want just want to see if it works. Most of the time, you have to set up your files, send them to a prototyping house somewhere far away, maybe in China nowadays. Um, they put it in the machine, they mill out a test board, and they send it back to you. And it takes a really long time, and it's really expensive, and it's just really, and if the board doesn't work, then you have to go through the entire process all over again. If you just have something you want to, yes? Well, I was just going to ask, how big a piece of material can you put into this machine? So this machine can handle four and a half by five and a half by about an inch and a half. So a little bit bigger than this and about this thick. And it's really good for small projects. So our idea is not to replace the giant mill for manufacture. Our idea is just have this in your house, on your desktop, or in your co-working space. And if you have an idea, or if you have something you want to make, we spent time making jewelry and name tags and stuff this morning, which was super fun, uh, you can use this multi do So it's a fun. And, um, so, that? so that, that wafer is like silicon with copper on either side of it. This is FR1, um, and it's uh, it's like a gel plastic kind of thing. It's usually what you make the PCB board out of is FR4 which has fiberglass in it, and we kind of don't really like the idea of people breathing in fiberglass, so we just... Why not? Uh, well, it's just not really you exciting. serious <laughs> lung damage. <laughs> like, wait, we're not really stuff. fun of lung damage, and also it's a skin irritant. So it's not that dangerous, we just prefer that we use And so we carry this in our store, and we carry it all the things. Um, and so this is what we're going to be using. So it, the, when you mill something, what comes off of the material you're milling is called swarf, which is one of my favorite words, personally. And it's all like, the junk, and it's a fine particulate matter that comes off. And this is also why it has windows on the machine itself. So the machine, yes? I have a question about that board. When you, I, I've had a, a board manufactured once, and the holes the, and the board that I got, they were lined with reduction. So the, the, the hole itself is a point where the two planes were connected to each other. Mm -hmm. uh, and you do that by soldering afterwards on this one? Those are called vias. And yeah. yes, you can. We, um, we have a way that you can do that just by hand. In fact, we're going to have the LED on this side is going to be kind of an example of how you can do a via. Uh, we don't have, uh, you can't, yeah. The short answer is you can absolutely do a via by just routing through with the wire for now. And then later on, we'll have uh, we'll have we'll have it a little bit more finished, so we can so you can just do, just drop the light in on the file and have it automatically do. But it's going to run in the new version of the tool. Yeah, the new version of the software. So you oh, need the software. Mm -hmm. but, but the, the question is partly whether there's a, a full board finished, you know, full metal in the hole. Mm -hmm. And so you you see how the way do you get an extra plate of metal on the on the not right now. Um, you can. There are many ways of doing it. Um, right now, all what we essentially what we do is if we need a little bit of metal to make contact with both sides of the board, you run all the wire through it. So you have to hand thread your wire through your bias. So if you have a lot of bias, it might not be great. But once we have uh, complete two-sided support, um, we will have methods for for plating your bias. That's really good. No idea, because I haven't come up with it yet. <laughs> I have an idea about that. Okay, that'd be great. <laughs> Well, I want, I want that ability. So. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's a really good ability. Um, and it's going to be kind of more on your end. We'll certainly have tutorials about it. But once we have, we'll have double-sided uh, board support in the software, so you can drop your bias. And then we'll have tutorials about how to plate your via, because the machine itself doesn't really do metal plating. It does drill holes, so you will have to kind of just, maybe you just have to put them on yourself. But we'll have a tutorial for it. Definitely.
Yeah, so just a couple uh, safety tips when you're using this machine. Um, it is cutting stuff out, so there are... Oh, 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 oh. But, um, yeah, there are uh, safety doors, so when you're running the machine, you should always leave these windows in. You know, be careful with your hands and with uh, clothing and hair. They can get caught up in the motors and cause problems, and you don't want that to happen. It's like any other power tool you have to inspect it. Um, um, you really should wear safety glasses and a dust mask if you're using things that make lots of dust. It's it's actually pretty self-contained, but just to you know use those precautions. Is it possible to, we were talking about it in our new space, putting it in a, in another cabinet just in terms of noise and dust control? Mm-hmm. So okay. you kind of get it going and then close the big door. Too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We actually have a sound baffle on one of our machines in our office so that we can run it all the time and it won't be as loud. Uh, but the machine doesn't actually make that much noise. Yeah. Maybe like a candle. Okay. Yes. So in terms of what it takes, no special ventilation, normal line no, uh, really, electricity? Yeah. Normal electricity, it plugs straight into a wall socket. It, uh, you don't need any special um, like vacuuming anything. I mean, we advise that you don't really machine anything really dangerous on it, like something that's going to have really, really toxic stuff. So that's why we say no off the floor. Um, but um, yeah, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty self-contained. You can just use a small vacuum or what have you out of it. To get all the stuff on it. Well, do you know if copper and acrylic are not toxic? Acrylic and copper are pretty non-toxic. There's, there's not. It, the machine doesn't generate like if you're machining something like this where you have really, really thin copper film. There's not a whole lot of copper dust that come off it. I um, I machined a bunch of anodized aluminum this morning, and it has a little bit of a little bit of dust, but it mostly stays inside the machine, and you just suck it up with a vacuum. Um, the same with silver or you know anything anything that is gonna anything that's gonna leave a lot of really tiny dust. It's not huge volume, but we just like to keep it. Yes. Okay, so polycarbonate. Uh, yeah, you can do polycarbonate. That would be fine. You'd have to you know kind of play with the settings a lot because um, one of the things about machining is that there are a lot of variables involved. So if you have um, a phrase you hear a lot in functional machining is speeds and ease, which means the rate that the spindle spins in relationship to how far the bed moves and how fast. And then you have um, the software which keeps track of all the settings for all the material. Like for example, if you have something that's this thick, you need to tell the machine that it's this thick, it's made of machining wax, and uh, these are the dimensions X and Y. And X and Y are the flat line of the bed, and then of course the Z is the up and down. Yes. So then you can just save your settings for the next Yeah, the machine can absolutely right. save the settings for, for anything. Any a big thing. part about what we're trying to do, and you'll see it change as we sort of continue to work on our software over the next few months, but in traditional machining, you have to know all the numbers of exactly how fast you want to cut and how fast you want the motor to turn and all those sorts of things. Um, and so it makes it really hard for people who haven't done this before. So what we've done for circuit boards and wax, and what we continue to do for other materials, is to add really smart defaults. So we can just say what kind of material we whether it's hardwood or acrylic or wax or whatever. And, yeah, and there are and a lot of settings that are already in the machine, but we're adding to it continually. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I've always said with ShopBot. Mm-hmm. It's like, isn't the software supposed to do all of this calculating <laughs> yeah. for me? Yeah. A lot <laughs> you, 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 it, as a person who did a lot of machining, Previously, um, you meet the old grizzled veteran machinists, and you know you have to earn your grizzled veteran machinist status because there are like machining manuals that are this thick, and they come in ten volume sets, and they have all the numbers you need, but you have to know where to find them, know what they mean, and know how they all work together. So right. there's a lot of data points which we've kind of simplified with all of our software, and but there's still a lot of data points. So even making it simpler, we're going to keep on reducing it and making it even easier. So. Um, so yeah, but it's it's a lot, and and like the grizzled veterans that we're carrying who are kind of experienced and know a lot. There's no way that this can. Oh hey, that totally that totally works. That's really great. That's really that's I can't believe I can't believe that that's even possible. I, mean, I think they, I think the real old ones they used to do it by the feel. Like when they yes, turn the crank, and like, it, oh, now a little bit, back off a little bit. A lot <laughs> of it is art at, as well as science yeah. and uh, and engineering. I mean, and there's a lot of math involved. Um, 
and there's a lot of a lot of everything. So like if you yeah you do it by braille, like you kind of do it by because the old for example old Bridgeport mills are like two thousand pounds and they're six feet high. They have all kinds of tooling. Nothing's automatic on them. Maybe sometimes you can get like a little digital seven segment display thing that will kind of tell you where things are in space. You can kind of get more precise. But yeah. Essentially, old old school machining is you turn the crank and you kind of like know your material and you know what it's supposed to feel like, and then you break a bit eight or nine thousand times, and then eventually, after about ten years, you're like the Yoda of machining, and so it's kind of great. But this is a lot simpler, um, and it's a lot more fun. It's not easier. So usual tech bits, does it take? Yeah. So we have today we have one thirty second inch bits, which are really small. Um, we also gave you a bunch of bits with the machine, and it goes down to one one thousandth, which is really, really tiny, and not something I would recommend starting out on because the bits are expensive and they break really easily. But um, uh, but yeah, they go down to really, really tiny. You can also get up to anything that fits in an eighth inch shape, which is the part of the bit that goes in what's called the collet, which holds a bit in place. Um, um, Dremel tools, any Dremel tool will fit in the other bell. So you can have a wire brush, you can finish off your, your you, know, you can polish stuff up, you can, anything that goes in a Dremel, grinding cones, what have you. <coughs> Alright. Cool, yeah, so today we're going to do a project, um, it's just a simple circuit project, which sort of, you know, I come from a sort of computer software engineering background, and we have this sort of idea of a hello world, where you sort of do the minimum that you need to do to prove that you know how to run the software and run the machine and all that sort of stuff. So, the hello world for electronics is lighting up an LED, and that's what we're going to do today. But you can totally use the machine. We hope you do use the machine for making molds and wood carvings and all kinds of other things and materials. So is this sort of where we thought we'd start out? All right, so I guess we're going to start with the interface mm -hmm. for on the computer, which we're going to bring that up here. Yeah, so this is Other Plan. And the first thing you do when you turn on Other Plan, you boot it up on your computer and you turn the machine on, the first thing it's going to ask, ask you to do is home the machine, which means tell the machine where it is in space. So we're going to start moving, and this is your machine right here. And what it's going to do, it's going to find the lower left-hand corner of the bed, which is this area right here, and it's going to sync it up with the actual machine itself. And if you guys want to come forward and have a look, that might be easy. Yeah. Or we can try putting this camera. I think it's better if you Okay. Yeah, it might. It's easier to kind of see relationally. So we have other plan open. And we have, yes. Uh, what operating systems do you... This is, oh, other plan is for OS 10. Oh, that's only for Mac? Yes, because every single other machining and CAD program in the world, pretty much, is for Mac. So we thought, we're going to make one for Macintosh, <laughs> just because there isn't one, and it would be nice to be Macintosh. A lot of people don't clap when we say that. Yeah, a lot of people do, but, but everything else uses Windows. It's like, yes, but yes. we have an option. Well, well they can accommodate. We've been accommodating Actually, the Windows for years. But in all seriousness, there are a lot of people use Windows and Linux that want to use this as well, and so that's on the road now. Yeah, we don't know. Absolutely. Yeah, the majority of buyers are probably Windows. Not necessarily. Especially now that they know that it's native for Mac. More Mac users who tend to be designers and artists and people who are going to not be in the really heavy duty engineering are going to be using these machines. Plus so those are people that pay for software. Is that? Plus those are people who pay for software. We give the it's software true. away for free. Yeah, yeah. So they pay for things in general. Yeah. <laughs> As true. So um, getting back to what we have. So right now, if you guys want to look up on the screen, um, we have the machine is rendered in gray, and then here's the machine bed. And you can twirl around and figure out. Zoom, and you can turn it, and you can also adjust your axes, so you can adjust your material settings, the thickness is here, and then the width, and then what you can do is you can also top view, and side view, and here's where the tool is in relation to the material and the deck, and then you can turn on all function things, and high dimensions, and all of the coordinates where the tip is. So the tip is presently 2.843 inches above the bed, and it's home corner, which is a bit too much. So I like the isometric view itself. So. 
Um, so the first thing that you want to do is you want to set up your materials. So in this case, we take our handy calipers, and we take our handy material, and we say, golly gee, that is 0.134 inches. inches. And you can also, there are settings that you can, in the blue options, and we'll add to this as time goes on. And so you put in the custom size, and the thickness is the same. And the, the software is really user friendly, so um, it'll tell you if you've forgotten something, it'll tell you to check on things, and like that. So you measure your X, which is across the bottom, which is, you know, this is already set up. So three inches by two inches. And then the next thing you do, once you've loaded up your material, you continue and it can, you can adjust your origin, which is where then or your, your file will show up on the bed. We'll demonstrate that. And so that's all done. And you can also do fixturing. These little holes are called fixturing holes, which we brought you a fixturing jig and some uh, threaded screws and a uh, wrench for them, and you can pull things in place really, really precisely. So you can, when we have two-sided support, you can flip it over and know exactly where you uh, placed yes. it so everything lines up. Registration. Yeah, so, so your registration is not off. You can, um, you know, you can make, you can cut solder stencils on this. So you cut your board, you cut your solder stencil, and then everything is perfectly lined up with your screws. Mm -hmm. So that's what fixturing is. Um, this is how you set your tool. So this is... Now, it has dropped the tool down so that you use your handy wrenches, which are. So the spinach is. Last thing I mentioned. So we're going to do this as a demo, but then once we're done, you'll have Yeah, everyone's going to have a so chance to do this. If you don't so. see it this time, we'll, we'll Yeah, so we have this is the spindle, and this is the collet. Collet? So a collet is the thing that actually holds the tool. So I'm going to take the collet out now and show it to you. The collet nut holds the collet in place, and the collet holds the tool. You get the material by mentions wrong. Will you break the tip? Oh yeah, you can absolutely break the tips, which is why you should be careful with your dimensions. So we have the tool, which is here, and we have the collet, which snaps into the collet nut, and it's kind of free moving. It spins around. And the tool goes in the front. Speaking of breaking the, the tip. <laughs> the gouge on the you yeah. see that gouge on the bed right there? That broke the tip. <laughs> yeah, that'll, that'll do it. It's, it's, it broke the tool. It's as, um, you know, we try to make it as easy as possible, but you still kind of have to use a little bit of pumps. So should you have a jump layer underneath that you're going to cut all the way through something? Yeah, you, this is actually, the machine bed is what we call a sacrificial layer. So. You can gouge it, you can drummel it down, um, you can remove it. You can also replace it, and we brought you a replacement bed somewhere, somewhere in here somewhere. Yeah. So we brought you a replacement bed. You just take the screws off, you pop it on, it's chamfered so that there's nothing. Can you machine out your own bed with that machine? Yes. Totally. In fact, the final stage at the factory where these are built is the machine faces the top of the bed. These little marks right here are facing marks. Mm -hmm. so, so it makes it level. Yeah. It, you take a one and that's And that's the main sort of, one of the main quality control checks that we have in the machine is it can actually yeah, it will. itself. Yeah, well, it takes itself. Does the other one, uh, do one uh, collet support all the tools, or do you have uh, multiple collets for different Oh, you can have multiple collets for different tools. Right now, we kind of stick with uh, one eighth and one quarter. Um, but you can get, it's a standard size. You yeah, can, like you I get, said. You get metric uh, collets as well. Yeah, and like I said, it fits most of yeah, There's a whole ecosystem. Yeah. We're sort of we're selling and supporting and starting with some real basic useful ones, but it can go off and make it yeah. The other thing you can do if you're machining something that's really thin, like silver or really, really thin aluminum, is you can take something slightly bigger, like um, uh, machining wax, and our incredibly high-tech uh, fixative method for machining wax, and uh, stick something, and then stick it to there. You add in the dimensions of your new sacrificial layer, and then you put your really thin. So what we do is we have our um, let's see we have our tool in place we have our 
tools set up. So we're going to choose the 130 second window. Can I switch back to the software? Yeah, that would be great. So what the, what the machine wants to do now is it wants to know where the tool is in space. So it knows where it, where it is in relationship to the bed. But the tool, you have to select the tool. Every time you change it, you have to plug it. And what you do is you touch up on the bed so that it knows how high it needs to go to lower itself to the right height of the tool. So you make sure that the tool is securely in place, and you hit verify tool position, and then you hit locate. In case you're wondering what these sort of yellow and black lines are, basically we already told it that we're putting a circuit board down um, that's two inches by three inches. That's so it thinks it's on the bed, so it's not going to try to touch off the tool where it knows it's just turning out. So it does mean that whatever band you use, it has to be connected to this. For this, there are ways, uh, sort of behind the scenes, to manually set the tool offsets, but. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is the easiest way not to break the <laughs> Yes, exactly. So it's gonna it's gonna touch off on the bed now, and it just barely, barely touches it. It makes it completes the circuit because there are all the circuits the surfaces are connected. The, the homing is based on the motors. Basically, it brings everything back to zero. It knows once it stops. Or they, they, the software they self calibrate. Yeah. So, and the way that was actually doing is, I think Malcolm said it, it's actually getting conductivity to the bed. Exactly. That's yeah. a really cool it's way to do it. So it just goes really, really it slow, and as soon as it gets Until it touches it, yeah, and then it touches nice. it, it says, OK, there I am. <coughs> so, so all the tools have to basically be conductive. But most tools are. Like, they should do that on 3D. I know they're all the time and do it by hand. And then to be able to correct in software for an unlevel bed. And, and some people who exactly. need glasses for up close have a much harder time with it than people <laughs> like me. <Yeah. laughs> like me. <laughs> I have a hard time with it. Well, I mean, you know, there's also the thing about leveling the bed. This one, you actually you level the bed to the machine. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah. uh, that's one of the And the machine right. levels itself. So well, that's what yeah. I mean. Is that, you know, all the little tolerances are all taken care of. Yeah. You run away after you put in the machine. Yeah, when you look at the machine, you'll see that the uh, rails, the, the ways that the various moving components are on are sort of these little flexible connectors here with little springs. And so that basically keeps it all within a, a system that doesn't require a whole lot of It'll require a little bit as long as you can but yeah. So the last thing you do is you import, or one of the last things you do is you import your files. So we're going to go to the desktop, and we made a couple of files for you guys. So we're going to import and the rocket. What's the name of that format? That you just, just this did? is a BRD board file. It's mm -hmm. from Eagle Pad. Um, and it's one of the things that the other other brand and other mill reads natively. So Another uh, app that we can use to make ERD files is uh, circuits.io, or what's now called Monkey 3 d Circuits, which is by Autodesk. But it's just a simple website where you can actually design schematics and search boards. Mm -hmm. And we should be able to see all this file. Mm -hmm. I think so you said in one of your announcements that it actually, at one point, it was only going to support Eagle CAD. So now it's Eagle. it's Eagle, it's a Gerber, uh -huh. um, and it supports this is sort of the more machinist format that supports G code that comes from other CAM oh. software. Yeah, so you can so, anything that can export G code. So, when, so if you use VCarve or HSM Works or you're listening to these really fancy you know, Rhino CAM or whatever, uh, you can load that into other CAM. Mm -hmm. But it would be the opposite. Not this yet. I mean, people are just getting their machines now. Okay. So, um, but eventually, yeah, yeah eventually yeah. we'll have a whole. We can just start building up files yeah. and sharing yeah. things. Yeah, yeah. Yes. We put the market down. You know, that's historical. Yeah. 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 We'll, put, we'll put this board that you just created there for us. Yeah. We'll put that on Figiverse. <laughs> so, um, I've imported the rocket, uh, the circuit, which is a super, super deep, super basic circuit. Um, here's the battery pads, and then here's the resistor, and then here's the resistor, and then here's the resistor that we're so this shows up in the panel right here, and I have to select my tool, which is 132nd, which is look, the same tool I have up here. If you look at the board rendering, um, when Simone changed the tool from a 164 to the larger 132nd, we noticed that the sort of yeah. way that it looked changed. So yeah, it re-renders. And basically what's happening here is these board files, what they ha have stored in them is where the electrical contact should be. 
And what our software does is it kind of makes the traces and it kind of comes up with a plan for how the machine should cut those, cut those traces. And so you can use sort of whatever tool you want, assuming that there's enough tolerances between the traces that you have. Um, and this will just show you it in your computer screen what it will do before it actually play that. So the idea is that you don't have to like know these things, you just experiment and see what happens. Yeah. Um, trace clearance is how many what's called passes the machine will make. So, for example, if I zoom in on the board here, you'll see that there are two trails, and that means that the machine is going to go by, go around the circuit, and mill the traces twice. So if I change this to zero, which is usually a time saver, it doesn't necessarily lessen the passes, but it does. Um, it doesn't lessen the passes. Looks like in the thing, but it will take less time if you. You can, you can increase and increase the number. You can play around with it. So that, that trace clearance is in addition with the trace you're clear you're, you're giving an yeah. additional offset. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and for something as small and simple as this, this is um, And then there's a setting for BRB files. There's a setting for cutting in the traces, which is cutting the electrical curve conduit that connects all the components. And then there's cutting the outline, which we don't have because we don't have the outline. Thing. But if you did have an outline, it would cut the fancy outline. The cut outline also cuts any through holes or vias you may have. So yeah. um, it does those before the stop one. Mm -hmm. And then um, and then cut visible is if you have several files on top of each other, which I'll just show you really quickly. You can import two files. I mean, this is, these are two different sides of the board, but it, you can import multiple files. So here are the files for this. And um, if you wanted to, you could just cut everything if it was all on one side. Like, say you had an outline and drills and a pretty little rocket thing, and then all of your traces for all of your components, you could just hit the cut visible button and it would cut everything. So you could import those from different sources. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, you could have a Gerber and your Google file and then whatever else. And your logo that you cut. Yeah. And then it would just cut it all. It would, and it would figure out what to cut first and what the, um, what the uh, toolpath is. And the motion plan, and it calculates the motion plan. But you would have to change tools. So, like, if you if you have, is one, and yeah, if you have to change numbers. tools, it will automatically say, "Okay, I'm done. Put put in the other tool, please." Um, you mentioned videos before. How are you mm -hmm. advising folks on those? Um, right now, you can drill your vias and then just run solder through them, or run a wire, or what have you. Um, the machine doesn't plate or anything. Oh, sure, so, sure. Yeah. Um, but that was actually So we can do that. And then when you change the tools, uh, I'm assuming it needs to rehome. Yeah. Again. It'll it'll be be mm -hmm. So it still needs to be able to make contact with the bed at some place. Yeah, if you change a tool, it's a good idea. Um, the machine retains all its settings. So usually, if, if you forget to do it or what have you, and, you know, I've been doing this, I, I do this all day, every day, so. Sometimes I will forget, and then it's really handy because the machine will rehome itself most of the time, It'll and it'll save all the settings, so you don't have to touch on every single time, but it's a good idea to do it if you change it. Just because things are never going to be exactly the height that you love them at. So, now that we have all of our software and all of our visualized plans imported and everything, we're going to put the material in the bed, which is the next thing. So what we do is we open up Move By, or you can also do this in the, um, there's the regular old menu up here. So you can, there are lots of options, whatever you come to get. And you hit the move by, and you hit unload material, and that brings the bed forward. We take our high tech fixturing appliance application, which is specialty, so you can see it. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be too much better? So we take a little bit of scotch tape. The CNC mm -hmm. on a little stand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there no, go. I'm already thinking about what kind of GoPro mounting. Right. Yeah. Right. There you go. So you've got the tape on the back of your board, and you line it up at the corner of the bed. You just make sure it's square against the corner of the bed. You press it down pretty hard. The tape does a pretty good job of holding things in place because there's not a whole lot of torque, and the it's not all that heavy. So. Um, that usually goes for it. And then we hit load material again. And so the machine's already loaned.
So, and you, there's also a rapid to home button. So if you're in between files and you just cut your tool and you kind of don't want to go through the whole process, you can hit rapid to home. And if it's too far off home, it'll go straight back. But if it's close enough, it's home right now. So, um, it just, it is. Snap on your safety, which has a little magnet. Snap on your just a And then we're going to go ahead and cut the traces. So here we go. And you can see it'll ask you, can you make sure everything's good? So just double check and make sure everything's ready. And you the traces. So it's kind of hard to see from the angle it's at right now, but it's drilling the through holes. It just drilled the through hole and it's traveling and it's cutting the traces. It won't take very long. What's the RPM? Uh, it can vary. I don't know what the setting is right now, but it goes from 9,000 to 12,000 RPM depending on the material. And you have all the bits. You sort of validated the bits. Yeah. Work and get rid of them. And can you generally do the same thing for drilling and for pieces? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you can see that the battery pad now. So in this case, you could have the finish by just doing one button. Okay. And then you have to think about making sure that you put the, the layers mirror to get it sort of lined up correctly. Eventually, yes. Mm -hmm. it, eventually, it will. We will move on. on that side of the Right now, um, there's no. Right now, we're not. This particular file is simple enough that you don't really have to worry about that. But um, yeah, there are ways to work around on double-sided boards. Right for now, but then we'll have full double-sided boards for this time. Mm -hmm. You can generate a mirror. Yeah. You have to generate a mirror. Yeah, you have to generate a mirror image of whatever you want on the opposite side of your board. And we actually had people doing that already, which is it's, it's working out pretty well. We've done it in a bunch of different software packages, and there are always things that need to be worked out, but it's so hard to work out. Well, I don't use keyboards, so right? Yeah, you can just mirror the board. And have it Your materials. How how soft a material can you go? Would you get tapering with brass, for instance? Yeah, brass machines really, really well. Sorry. <laughs> brass machines really well. Aluminum. Um, it can't cut really hard metals. Like um, like you can't really do titanium or steel because they're really hard. The machines don't have enough torque, and also you need lubricant. Um, Especially the machine things like steel, and the machine doesn't handle it. They well, usually have yeah. water forming on this when you're nope. machine. Oh, it's, right. yeah, it's almost never water. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's fine. Hold on. Trying to be, trying to be uh, transparent. This gives you a great view right here. Yes. <laughs> so basically, that's, that's the idea of the software, is it shows you exactly what your machine's doing at the same time. So. You can also notice at the bottom of the screen, it's a little bit washed out, but there's a pause button, a cancel button, and then there's a little progress bar here. This is sort of an estimate. Um, it's actually surprisingly hard to estimate how long these things are actually going to take, because basically what's happening behind the scenes is that the software converts this design into a bunch of machine structures, G-code. It basically tells the machine, you know, spin this fast, move, move in this direction for this long, this, you know, like you're telling, uh, you're telling, giving somebody traffic directions or something. And um, even though it has all these really specific directions, the software doesn't know how long it'll actually take necessarily. So it's a bit of an estimate, but it does show you sort of how far through the, through the directions. All right. So we finished cutting our traces. So we're going to unload, have a look. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, those traces actually got really well. So what we're going to do is we're going to reload it and then cut our through holes. <coughs> so you said that was that the dot? Uh, no, uh, this is actually just a straight 
the RD file. Oh, yeah, it, it does handle tap and NC and, and a bunch of other stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw caution to the one and have Ezra just hold up that camera and we're going to cut out lines. <laughs> do not do this at home, generally speaking. So it's going to cut through holes, and it was exactly where it was before, so the through holes will be cut pretty precisely. And touching off on the bed was what, and, and also telling the machine what material thickness it is, is how it knows how deep you go. Mm, yeah, automatically. Also very important. Oh, yes. <laughs> very important. As someone found out by scragging one of the books of the bed. <laughs> no break this. Oh yeah, it's it's process. a it's an absolute learning curve. Luckily, one thirty seconds are a lot harder to break than one sixty four. So now it's in the outlines. Oh yeah, now we can shut down. So we're gonna show how the pause button works by pausing it and then stopping it. Because you have to have a board outline for it to import properly, but since we don't really have a fancy outline, our outline was just a two by three uh, inch um, uh, So we cut our traces, we cut our through holes. We're going to wrap it up and only if you know that works going. And then we're going to hit a new material. And we fill our uh, board off. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to peel the tape off the back side and machine the logo. And everybody will have a chance to do this with us. So, so can okay, we pull on a logo in from Illustrator? Uh, you can. You need to figure out, you need to put it in some kind of CAM software to convert it to something the machine can understand, like a Gerber or a G code. Or um, or the yeah, you have to convert the DXF. So you have to convert the DXF into the DXF. Exactly. Yeah. On our roadmap is definitely plans to support many more different kinds of files. Um, myself, I'm not a machinist, and I don't have a lot of experience with CAD, so I'm really excited about being able to bring in like Illustrator files or SVG files. Um, but you know those are inherently for two D formats, not three D formats. Creating things with the files of that. And with something this small, you'll notice there's always going to be a little bit of precision and a little bit of um, a few, you know, little glitches. But um, yeah. but we didn't quite drill all the way through the copper. We drilled most of the way through, so we're gonna you know just correct it by poking it out when we put. So we're gonna drill or we're going to import so we're gonna import our logo file, which is right here. And that's a tap file, which some which uh, Malcolm mentioned before. And tap is G code. So we're going to select our tool, one thirty second, and you'll notice it just has a tool selection because everything is built into the G code. Everything that tells the machine what what uh, the only thing you tell it is what tool you're using, as opposed to the the very file you can tell what the traces are, and you can drill the outline of the traces uh, separately. So this just cuts the code. Um, yeah, we can do it. Reload the material. And we're going to make sure that everything's all booby, and we're going to. We're just going to delete the notes of the actual rocket. And this is the motion plan for the decode, which doesn't show up as nicely as the BRD file does, but it's there. I don't see it. Oops. Mm -hmm. so All right, cut T1. Wait, I didn't inform my machine, but that's okay. It comes itself. Right. Okay, <laughs> yes, E is the emergency stop. So that will. Uh, okay. There's also a big red button on the side of the machine. <laughs> that is the uh, emergency stop for when the actual emergency stop. So we didn't break the bit, but we sure as heck stopped that. Uh, it wasn't, even though it wasn't, it had stuff on it. So yeah, this happens. Oh yeah, it totally happens. So I really like those, uh, the idea of those, what did you say, the 
I can't remember the term you used, but to be able to secure a board down with screws. Mm -hmm. Fixed string. Fixed string. So what I imagine is it's like having some common files just to make some fixed string holes and make that as part of your initial board. Drill those holes and then that's completely possible. And then that's screw really then idea, screw yeah. into those holes and then that's just something that now you use that as your mounting holes on your circuit board. Exactly. Do you, do you actually have the fixed string hardware here? Yeah, we brought you some. Yeah. Fixed stream yes. hardware? Fixed stream yeah. hardware. Yeah. So, so, thank you, Malcolm. Like on this thing, you can see these, mm -hmm. these three screws here. And yeah, there's a lot on them. And the, there's also a jig that comes with it. There's a jig that comes with it. Um, for these, it's just a standard screw. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, we haven't tested that, but as long as it's not your full pattern, I'm not going to go. Oh, the APS thing is for all of them to find their. The only problem is it's hard. You can't get the loaded bed. The loaded bed is the uh, is the uh, Y carriage, mm -hmm. so it's our the X carriage. So it's a little bit tricky. To it's my phone over there that you see. Yeah. Is your thanks on um the capacity? Yeah, it's just normal. Another thing, if you're a power user, is um, you go to the preferences and other plan and turn on bit breaker mode. It gives you extra access to um, some other control options. So uh, <laughs> you can type it. Yeah. Yeah. So it shows you, it tells you why you should be. There's a, um, you can, there's a console. It's more about what's the thing. There's a open source project where you can uh, put something on a device you can so you can load the G-code of a Wi-Fi so you can have a box. <laughs> so yeah, the, the way that the, if you're interested in sort of the control aspects of the machine, we're using an open source hardware system called Fanny yeah. Jack um, from Synthetos, which are uh, good friends of ours. And so they have some software called TGFX that we're working with them on getting full support with the uh, machine on and uh, Synthetos, and the platform is Tiny G. Okay. So we will be, you know, there'll be more and more support for that. It's the same control board that I think the Shea Coco uses, and some others, and Shopbot uses it for some machines. So, um, you know, there will be more as we go to systems. So, yeah, so I'm going to just rehome the machine, or the uh, catastrophic tool. When something catastrophic happens, it's good to kind of just make yeah. sure everything's all been set happy. So, keep our that really Thank you. All right, so we're going to try this again. Wow. Well, that's really weird. That is weird. Wow. Well, who? It's, it's is our little kind of burr holding it, up the board. It might be. It might I, be. I scraped it down a little bit. Right. That's what I, I was think thinking. That is, that it's not yeah. getting the good. We'll, we'll try on the other machines as well. But, yeah. but basically, I know you've seen the whole process. Yeah, yeah. so we can kind of do that. Yeah, we should get you guys going on the board. So that's essentially the process in a nutshell. You end up with whatever I was passing around. I'm going to have it. Yeah. That moves pretty quick. Yeah. 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 Pretty fast. Yeah, that was the other thing. Is it seemed like the the feed oh, was very fast on that. I see what happened. Yeah. It, it hit the hole. And oh right, and, and, it yeah. hole. And, uh, and so the and they was up a little bit and picked it up. Yeah, so that's <laughs> part of that is up. Uh, so yeah. like if we if we had just sort of picked this to the other side of that, yeah. So, so you can actually up. fix it on either. The origin happens. I'm going to just home this up this way. But here's the origin holder, and you can change yeah. your origin I'm settings. Go What's that? Oh. So you can you can move this around. And so you can actually click on this. You can do it a bunch of ways, but you can click on the width and change it. You can click on the height and change it, and this will bring it back or whatever corner you want it. And then the cool thing is you can click on that and just drag it. So. You can even drag materials. Yeah, you can also drag materials. So it's really 
Oh, I see. So you, you can set where the material is, yep. and then you can set where the line up. Yeah, or you want it in the middle, just to Nice. So you can do the corner. You can do this make sure that you measure with the caliper or something with the lettuce. Yeah, because yeah, otherwise you'll... So I noticed when you were doing the too, because of that little burr in the bed, I noticed that the just up slightly in that corner. Yeah, and that's probably why it caught in the corner. Okay. So, um, yeah. the machine will probably have a little more. Right. So, uh, uh, can, can, you, can you hold to the center? <laughs> um, I think it automatically just hangs for the in the lower left hand corner, mm -hmm. and then you can adjust the storage. But it'll always hang for the corner because that's where it knows where this is. Can you do a re leveling? Like, if we have an issue like this, could you like, yeah, let's make the, the sacrificial level a little bit shorter? Yeah, you, you can absolutely do that, and then we also brought you a new bed. Yeah, well, in this, case, in this case, but just if you have your own machine, yeah. eventually you can get on level. Yeah. You know, you yes. Oh, yeah. I get you machine. can also yeah. buy a new bed for us. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but, yeah, you can, the machine does face itself. Yeah. Oh, cool. All right, so... Did you say what uh, the smallest uh, trace was you could do this now? Um, wow. So we've been doing some testing. Our uh, QA engineer James was doing some testing. We advertised 10 mils. Um, with, I think all the tools we tried out that worked pretty well. We have conductivity on small small mils up to one mil, but it's not very stable and they break really easily. So probably realistically, it's somewhere in the seven to ten. Mil. Okay. So you. it's pretty small. So what if you just rephased this one? Mm -hmm. If like you went through that. Yeah. Refacing, wouldn't it just take off those burrs? Yeah, it would. It would also take a while because basically, if you look at the bed, you'll see sort of that the uh, width of each pass is a little bit bigger, and you can only use like a push tool to do that. So. Um, now, that's actually another question. Sometimes you have to clear your area, not just doing isolation. Mm -hmm. um, but how do you tell the machine to clear? Some area. That that would be in you know whatever yeah. whatever file that would be yeah. in you know if you're loading in a G code file you set that up in your path software and okay. software. You can start to do that. Um, again, like in the future when we're able to import you know different kinds of design files that comes up that, that other would be able to set up. I can also write a quick program just to skip just what you would probably skip it. Yeah, face um, this one. Face it, uh, and you could do that around the laptop, and then it probably wouldn't take off. No, we've got. We've actually got. Yeah, so there's right a here. program right here, Add Facing Plan, and it just, you can tell the tool and yeah, say do, what the step over, step like over is how far the tool moves over. Um, so when you turn on uh, Fit Breaker mode, like we just told you about, it adds this Add Facing Plan option, and that's that's the program that we're talking about. Sorry. So yeah, so. yeah, Facing Plan, Facing Plan, and all kinds of things. Well, never mind. Cool. So let's get everybody. How do you want to do this? Later? Um, we have two machines. So plus this one. And then plus this one. Um, so we can get traces. And let's just pass out a bunch of boards. Yeah. And we can all gather them. Do you want to? Um, I mean. We've kind of gone through everything in terms of the video. We could actually move those machines over to the workbench. Is that easier? Because we don't need to keep recording. Maybe we can move one of them over there, and that way there's sort of... Okay. All right, so I'm going to turn this off.